It's exposure meter time again, and this time we're going right back in time to the early 1900s with a Watkins B meter. The B meter was invented by Alfred Watkins of Hereford in the late 1800s, although my copy probably dates from around 1922. The B meter may have got its name because of its small size and efficiency, although as Watkins was also a beekeeper, he may have just decided that this was a suitable name. My copy comes complete with its original cardboard box quoting the price of five shillings on the front. Inside we have the B meter itself along with the short instructions, the full instructions, my copy being the 12th edition, and the Watkins speed list dated June 17th 1922. This speed list may have come with the meter when it was new, but Watkins also offered up-to-date lists for three and a half pence, so it could be a later edition. In these lists, Watkins tested currently available films and photographic plates for their sensitivity because not all of them were sold with realistic sensitivity ratings. On the front of the B meter on the internal dial, you have your f-stops ranging from f4 to f90, and your light readings ranging from 2 seconds to 130 seconds. It gets a little confusing down at the low end because the two share the same space. 4 seconds and f4, 3 seconds and f5, and 2 seconds and f6. But once you understand that, it all makes sense. Round the outside are the plate speeds, or sensitivities, and your exposure times ranging from 130 seconds down to 1 500th of a second. The plate speeds are also used for the fractions of a second, so the 130 can both indicate a plate speed of 130 and 1 130th of a second. To make it a bit easier to understand, one second is here, anything to the right of that is in full seconds, and anything to the left are fractions of a second. I don't know how the plate speed numbers relate to current ASA or ISO speeds, but the lower numbers are a slow film, and the higher numbers are a fast film, just as they are these days. Also on the front of the meter is the comparison window. The right hand side is your control strip and the left hand side is the measuring strip. We'll look at that in a bit more detail when I demonstrate it working. On the back of the meter are some suggested minimum shutter speeds for photographing various situations, such as strolling at 2 miles per hour or animals feeding, where it suggests no slower than 1 20th of a second, or trotting at 50 miles an hour, running or photographing yachts, no slower than 1 150th of a second. Inside the meter is a stack of light sensitive paper discs. When you want to take a reading, you move a fresh section of the top disc into the measuring window and time how long it takes to reach the same darkness as the control side. When you'd used up all the clear areas on the top disc, you'd open up the meter in subdued lighting and move the used disc to the bottom of the pile. Once you'd used up all the discs in the unit, you could buy fresh discs from Watkins at a price of 11 old pence. In theory, the top and bottom halves of the meter pull apart to swap the paper discs, but I haven't tried that yet. So, how do you actually use the B-meter? Firstly, you point the front of the meter towards the light source that's illuminating your subject, rather than reading the light reflected off your subject. There are exceptions to this, but for now we'll stick with that rule. Then, holding the front of the meter, rotate the back until a fresh area of the light sensitive paper appears in the measuring window. It's a little tricky because you appear to need to stop the glass rotating at the same time. I suspect that the relative frictions inside have changed over the years. Once you've revealed your fresh area, begin counting in seconds. Mississippi 1, Mississippi 2, Mississippi 3, Mississippi 79, Mississippi 80, Mississippi 81, Mississippi 82, Mississippi 83... Continue counting until the measuring strip is about the same darkness as the control side. You may be able to tell at this point that the paper in my meter might have just lost a little bit of its sensitivity in the last hundred years. Mississippi 152, Mississippi 153, Mississippi 154, Mississippi 155, Mississippi 156, Mississippi 157, Mississippi 158, Mississippi 159, Mississippi 160. 
Okay, that ended up taking 160 seconds, even with the assistance of Bright Torch at the end. So for now I'll ignore that reading and just pretend that it took 30 seconds. This gives you your actinometer value of 30. Next, hold the meter between your fingers, squeezing gently on the back and the glass, and rotate the front by holding the handle until the f-stop you're planning to use lines up with the plate speed or film speed that you're using. Let's say that I'm shooting at f8 and my film speed is 180, then I rotate the front until 180 is more or less alongside f8. And now look on the other side for my light reading or actinometer value of 30 seconds. There isn't actually a 30, so you go to the nearest one which is 32. And in line with that is our shutter speed of 1 sixth of a second. So we're now ready to take our photograph safe in the knowledge that it will be exposed correctly. If I do one more example, say I'm shooting at f16 with a film speed of 65 and I counted 90 seconds for the test strip to match the control strip. I'll rotate the front until the plate speed of 65 lines up with f16, and then looking at 90 seconds in the light column, I can see that my correct exposure will be 6 seconds. You can continue using the B-meter in lower light conditions by counting the minutes rather than the seconds. Let's say initially that we're shooting at f8 with a film speed or plate speed of 65, and we counted 130 seconds for the test strip to match the control strip. That gives us an exposure time of 2 seconds. Obviously, the 130 seconds that we counted is more or less 2 minutes. If we now take another reading and the light levels have dropped, and this time we count 4 minutes, we just look at the 4, which is next to the F4 mark, and next to that is 1 16th. Only this time that's 1 16th of a minute rather than 1 16th of a second. And 1 16th of a minute is 3.75 seconds, which we'd round to 4 seconds. So that gives us our correct exposure for the lighting conditions. There were alternative dials available for United States measurements, colour photography, studio and interior, and so on, but I guess the standard version of the meter will be the most common. If you were shooting outdoors in sunlight and you wanted to retain shadow detail, the meter should be pointed at the sky at right angles to the sun's rays rather than pointed directly at the sun. For an open landscape shot, the meter can be pointed directly at the sun to get a nice contrasty image. The instructions continue with information about low light and indoor photography and other special circumstances, like photographing snow, but I think we can skip over those. And that's about it. If you've enjoyed watching, please like the video and maybe even subscribe to the channel, not forgetting to click on the bell icon so you get notifications when future videos are released. That's it for now, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.